World War II left the world in a state of chaos and poverty. The 1950s saw people adapt to the food shortages with uh, creative recipes. Let's take a look at some of the weirdest and grossest foods in the 1950s. Before we do that, make sure you subscribe to our channel and drop us a comment about what other historical topics you'd like us to cover. In many countries, one could see almost every meal encased in gelatin. In the United States, this was taken to a whole other level with the famous Jell-O. Post-war domesticity depended on modern technology and efficiency. Everything had to be cheap, fast, and mess-free. Jell-O meals would fit the criteria. So why not put everything in Jell-O? That's right, people even put everything from canned pineapple to lamb chops in Jell-O. One popular dish in American cookbooks was the Perfection Salad. This was a layered cake made with shredded carrot, celery, cabbage, and pepper. Oh, and vinegar. People went a little overboard with vinegar in the 1950s. But if the perfection salad was a bit too bland for you, you could always go for jello shrimp salad, jello chili, or jello tuna salad. The truly worrying thing about fish and gelatin molds is that the jelly was sweet. Lime flavored jello was very popular in America, so people used it in all their savory recipes too, like the lime cheese salad. If you were feeling a bit fancier, you could serve a jellied tomato refresher at your dinner party. Uh, don't forget to serve it with a cocktail glass with a slice of green pepper. Okay, well, perhaps you're tired of jello. Another easy and versatile meal was the meatloaf. Again, it was cheap. It was big enough for a hungry family of four who wanted second day leftovers as well. The classic meatloaf could be served on its own or covered in ketchup. Meatloaves came in many varieties. You could have the frosted ribbon loaf, which had pretty layers of ham and egg filling frosted with cream cheese. Or if you felt crafty, you could make the super salad loaf. Combining your love for jello and loaves, you could also present your loaf as an igloo to spice up the presentation. Following the pattern of loafy rolls frosted in tube creams, there was the shrimp sandwich roll. What's inside? Well, shrimp and cream, obviously. If you wanted to surprise and disgust your party guests at the same time, the right choice would be the liver sausage pineapple. It looks like a pineapple, but it's filled with canned meat, mayo, and Worcestershire sauce. Enjoy! Another popular dish was the bologna cake. It looked like a cake, but it was made from bologna, onions, coated in cream cheese, and decorated with spray can cheese. Okay, so to make bologna cake, I'm starting off with taking bologna and stacking it up high using cream cheese as the glue for sticking them together. Then I'm taking spray can cheese and adding little drops around the edges so it looks more like a cake. In the 1950s, America was also preoccupied with artificially adding vitamins and nutrients to packaged food that would last for years. One famous example is Wonder Bread, which claimed to be the most nutritiously enriched bread in the States. A sandwich daily and two slices of Wonder Bread every meal give you eight elements you need. Wonder Bread ads targeted children with Superman and Howdy Doody recommending the super meal. The ads claimed you could pretty much eat Wonder Bread instead of everything else because it had all the vitamins and nutrients you needed. Not a lot of children's nutritionists would agree with this today. When the meat and fresh produce shortages met modern technology, America strayed further and further away from real foods and started a mission to find the most compact, artificially produced, and nutrient-rich meal. But there were always recipes with real fruit too, not just what you'd expect. If you simply wanted to be gross, you could make some ham and banana hollandaise. 
Simply wrap bananas in ham, then drop a gallon of hollandaise sauce on them. It fits the 1950s criteria of cheap and fast, but at what cost? In post-war Britain, food scarcity was even worse. There wasn't any frozen food or freezers to store it in, and most foods were rationed. A staple of British cuisine was fish and chips, still popular today. Fish and chip shops were among the only places people could afford to eat out. Spam fritters were a popular and very easy meal in Britain. Processed meat was covered in batter and deep fried served with instant mash and canned peas. But Britain still showed great food variety compared to the countries in the Eastern Bloc which were under the communist regimes in the 1950s. There were no supermarkets and all food was rationed from flour to sugar. Sometimes you'd queue up to a shop not knowing what you'd get. Beggars couldn't be choosers and you had to cook with what you were given. People got very creative in the 1950s Eastern European countries. School meals in Poland were at the top of the list. For breakfast, it was semolina, burnt milk with skin formed on top, or milk soups with overcooked noodles and, of course, milk skin. In Romania, chicken feet soup was a delicacy, considering chicken was extremely difficult to come by in the 1950s. In fact, all prime cuts were to export and Romanians had to deal with feet, necks, and ears from various animals. Echoing American jello dishes, a traditional Romanian Christmas dish was pifti, made from pig's ears, garlic, and gelatin. Similar to the spam fritters, Eastern Europeans would deep fry parizer, a sort of budget bologna, and serve it with whatever they could get their hands on, like potatoes or carrots or cabbage. But at least one quart of milk a day, every day. For fast-growing young people, more than a quart. For adults, at least a pint. And milk to drink, combined with other foods, in ice cream and in cheese. Nutrition advice had definitely changed since the 1950s. We have since learned that 90% of the world's population is actually lactose intolerant. And there are plenty of reasons, from health to animals' rights, to reduce our meat consumption. Quaker Oats is rich in protein almost as much total protein as 18 strips of bacon. But no matter how science or taste has changed over the last 70 years, some yummy 1950s foods are still very popular. Kraft Foods introduced sliced processed cheese back then, and it led to the famous cheese toasty, more commonly known as a grilled cheese. A Welsh rarebit is a close alternative in the UK, also introduced in the 1950s and made with sharp cheddar, milk, and mustard. An honorable mention is the 1954 Swanson TV dinner. The first frozen ready meal that took inspiration from plain food and became an instant craze across America. Its low price and convenient time saving on preparation and washing up quickly led to the ready meal industry, present all around the world today. Last but not least, 1955 was the year that McDonald's opened its first franchise in Des Plaines, Illinois. Its tiny menu comprising fries, burgers, cheeseburgers, and shakes was a groundbreaker in serving time. Its legacy is familiar to all of us, even though the quality of the food is a little bit more questionable these days. What's your favorite and least favorite food from the 1950s? Do you know any other weird foods that we missed? Let us know in the comments, and while you're at it, why not click the like and subscribe buttons?